My name is Sapanki. I'm an anaesthetic registrar in Mersey. Um, I graduated from Liverpool, stayed in Liverpool, really like Liverpool and probably will hopefully get a consultant job here as well. As an anaesthetist, um, my day-to-day -day job is elective theatres, so doing um, planned surgeries from head and neck surgery, general surgery. Um, I could do a bit of obstetrics as well if I'm in that place and hope I'll be experiencing paediatrics. I've done um, jobs at the Walton Centre as well, so doing uh, neuroanesthesia and Liverpool Heart and Chest doing uh, cardiothoracic um, anesthesia as well. Um, emergency, so when I'm on call, so that will involve days, weekends and night shifts as well. Um, so that's a variety of things, so you never really know what's going to come through the door. With anaesthetics as a specialty, you do get a lot of support anyway. So starting as a junior, um, you um, have to get a certain number of competencies before you can go on call anyway. And once you've managed those competencies, then you can start on those on, start on the on-call rota. And even if you start as a junior and you're on your own, there's always a, usually a consultant around to help because everyone's been through it before. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about anaesthetics is that how supportive it is. And then as you go up the ranks, you, you gain more independence and as you gain more experience. But even as a senior trainee dealing with emergencies, you still are well supported within your um, sort of skill set. In terms of dealing with emergencies, um, I've gained more confidence over the years. Um, and it, it can be stressful, um, but I, that's the other thing that I find exciting about anaesthetics is having to deal with that situation there and then. Mm. In terms of um, with work, my main issue has always been confidence. I've not always been the most confident doctor, I don't think, and I think um, I've had to, as I've gained more experience, that has improved. But the thing about, um, especially after you qualify, whatever you learn in the textbooks, it doesn't, it's not going to be exactly the same as it is on the wards. I think um, when, when you qualify, you, and you, you're on the wards, uh, the nurse will ask you a question and you think you should know the answer straight away, but that's not how it works. It um, doesn't matter how much medical school prepares for you, you, you're never really prepared enough. And it's not until you get onto the wards and you deal with even simple things, prescribing fluids, pain management, it's not something that you can really get a grasp on until you start doing the work yourself or if you start shadowing, a, a fi um, as I think as a fifth year medical student you shadow. Um, even then it takes time to develop those skills and kind of know. Um, I think so certain milestones have helped me become more confident such as getting the exams but even so to pass the exams is a str was a struggle. Um, so. Uh, in t so another hurdle, I think, um, would have been getting my anaesthetic exams. Um, I think as doctors, and someone told me this um, as a med student, we are not prepared for failure. We've gone through school, passed everything, we, we do well in whatever um, parts of our lives, and then we start university or do post-university um, exams, and that it becomes harder. So I got through my first anaesthetic exam, but then it, when it came to my second anaesthetic exam, I didn't pass it. And it was difficult to deal with because um, it's not something that I'd experienced before. And it's a bit of a blow to your confidence as well, but it actually gave me the kick up the bum that I needed to knuckle down and work hard and, and pass it the second time. Um, I was quite lucky because at the time I kind of gone through med school with no problems and passed my exams in med school so this was a different experience for me. In terms of outside of work life, again I've been quite lucky, um, stable fam like sort of family life, stable personal life and things like that. Um, but there was a time in my life when um, it was quite recently where something had happened in my personal life that was during my exam time and having to deal with both while trying to revise for exams was quite difficult and I think at the time I just you just have to crack on and deal with it um, but I didn't realize at the time that I needed a break and that wasn't until after I sort of passed the exam. I had a focus at that time was just to get through the exam and then I knew that once I'd done it 
I can kind of relax and I'd made plans for the future holidays or whatever. Had to put whatever was going on at home kind of to the side for a little bit, which is quite hard to do because I wanted to um, support that person, um, but I couldn't put 100% in um, because I knew that if I could just get the exam done. And it might have been, I felt quite selfish in a way because I should have been supporting that person more, but I just, and my family a bit more, but I just knew that I had to just get the exam done and then I could focus on that afterwards. Um, I think going through the first exam where, I've, where I didn't pass it, um, at the time, so I, I play the flute and I play in a, in a music group and um, this is something that I've done through uni as well. When I started, when I'm in exam mode, I don't do anything. I don't go out, I don't go for dinner, I don't meet friends. I'm in my room, I'm revising from, for 12 hours with a couple of breaks and I don't do anything. And what I realised um, after I'd failed the first exam, I didn't go to the band that I usually play with. I stopped going for a long time. And then I didn't do that the second time because I kind of realised that you need a break. You need something to relax. You need to get out the house, go for a walk. And playing in that band was not only a release, but it was a social, it's a social thing. You see other people and you chat to something other than medicine because a lot of the people in my band are medics. And that's another problem about medicine. It's so cliquey and you get entrapped in that circle and you don't know how to come have a conversation which isn't about medicine, which I found. And that's the thing about um, when I started the band as well as I, I no I, I had no idea how to communicate with people who weren't me, me, who weren't doctors because I had nothing in common. Um, I run and I love it. That endorphin kick is a real thing, definitely. I know I will feel so much better after I've gotten out of the house and exercise. Like during university, I was a member of the gym and you'd go just because you had I paid for it or whatever but then I, could, I would never keep it up and it was a waste of money. So um, I just started running just to have something a bit extra to do, but then I found that it really helped um, me get some fresh air and I'm bouncing off the walls when I come back home. So now if I'm particularly stressed, um, I do go for a run and I've, most of the time I feel better. Yeah, Ups. and people think I'm a little bit mad, but um, after I finish the exam, because I'm quite um, a routine, like I like routine. And after I finished the exam, I was bored. <laughs> so when you're revising, you get stuck into a bit of a routine. You get up, you go to work, and then you revise or whatever. Um, and I'm not the type of person to stay at home and do nothing. I can't just come home at work and sit down and watch TV or whatever. So I started running, and it was actually a friend of mine who. Um, uh, kind of inspired me again to start running again. So I just did a bit on my own and then the competitiveness in me started to think, oh, maybe I can go a bit further. So I joined a running club and then my friend who inspired me did the London Marathon. So I applied because I thought if she could do it, then I could do it. So I've got a place in the London Marathon, so I'm running this year.